I'm going to be tying a midge pattern. It's just basically a sunburst and brown midge pupa. Uh, it's a fly I tie for a friend in Ireland. Uh, he does extremely well with it, so I thought you'd like to see it. It's, it's a simple fly to tie, so basically I just call it the sunburst and brown midge. Um, hook choice is up to yourself. It can be a curved hook or a straight hook in this case. Sizes are normally tie. There's tens and twelves. And this is uh, the one I'm using here. It's the full and mill version. Competition heavyweight. Size 10. The thread I'm going to be using, which obviously suits the colour of the fly, is the dark brown uni in 8 0 They have waxed the thread. And what I'm going to do is come down about a third of the way, which is right there. I'm going to be using a dyed sunburst. Which is diver, it's just a stretch floss from the from vineyards. I'm just going to trim this away. You catch it on the way down, it's much easier to catch it on the way down. So as we wind down, we can stretch it out. Now you can tie this short or long, it's up to yourself now. I normally tie it to just slightly comes round the bend. Then I bring the thread back up a good half dozen turns. Then I get, this is a pheasant tail, just basically been dyed brown. It's a dark brown. Pull it 90 degrees from the stem, which will line up the tips. A good half a dozen plus fibres. Don't be shy. And pull them into the tips. And then we can wind up. Wind it all the way back up to where we caught in the stretch floss. And we can stretch it away the excess and trim it away. A couple of turns just to neaten that up. And then we wind. Best to wind the pheasant tail towards yourself, in my case. So as I wind away from myself normally, I'll bring the rib up through and it will catch it in better and protect it. Then to tie it off, because we wind towards myself, we go across the pheasant tail. And then we do a turn on the hook, which locks it in. We do the same again and again. And then we can trim away the excess. We can bring the rib up, now do a Stretch it as you come up, stretch out the back nice and tight, turn on the actual thread, and then we wind up. And this what this does, it helps to give you a, a taper. And then we just wind up towards the eye. We can then stretch away the floors and trim. It gives you a nice neat cut. Now it's got a thorax cover. Well, the Opal Barrage, now I'm using the large, you could go away easily with the, the medium as well, it's this one here I'm using. This is from UTC. Just catch that on the way back down, and on top of the shank. It's a very simple fly, it's a very simple midge pupa, but it's a good colour combination that works. Just make sure you're on top. Now I'm going to use goose bites for the cheeks, or to represent the wing buds. So this has basically been it's a sunburst that's, well it's more, it's dyed yellow, and then you add a wee touch of orange in and it highlights the edge. If you can see it there, of the bite, it just uh, highlights the edge. So what we do is we take two out, pull them 90 degrees from the stem, and we can tear them away. Now what I normally do is just, Straighten up the tips a wee bit so they're a wee bit. I don't want them too tapered, that's enough. Now, what we do is we fold this so that they're on the sides, two or three turns, and make sure it's right up against the body. Now, I'm going to show you this. You want to have the, the bites curving away from the shank of the hook. You could have them coming from the bottom up on top. It's up to yourself or along the sides. There's different ways of doing it. Now, what I've got here, this is, you can see here, it's a diamond bright dubbin called Hare's Ear. That's it there. Now, I mix it with some body fur from a hair or a mask. I've just blended it using my fingers, just mixed them both together. You don't need much. Now, first thing we do is just make sure these are tight and tidy. Go back in, and then lightly dub it onto your thread, and then 
I can build with the wood axe up. And it can be as thin, as heavy as you like, whatever you fancy. I like it either it's not too heavy, but enough that so you can at least see it. That's fine. Now you can either take the bites first, come bring them over, and then the thorax cover. It's entirely up to yourself. It will still work either way. So what I'm going to do is bring the bites first. Stroke back any fibres going forward. Just bring it. Tidy it up. Just a wee quick look. Make sure things are sitting the way you want first. That's fine. Now make sure there's a good half dozen turns in there. Keeping the thread tight, I can then tear these the bites away, the goose bites. And then we can bring the thorax cover over. Now I like to give it a wee, just a wee stretch before I actually tie it in. Curves better over the top, you can see there. Now we've got two or three turns and we can fold this back. They don't be shy of a head on midge pupa because the heads are quite pronounced. So catch the edge of that with the scissors and it will trim away or tear off. A wee bit of wax just there. Now for the wing, you can finish it that. Some don't like goose the uh, In this case I'm going to put some uh, basically we call them breathers. That's what represents the gills in the midge pupa. Some like them, some don't. Uh, you can either or. I'm going to put them on so it's quite simple. We just have a length maybe half centimetre over the front and then we figure eight so we just encourage this to be like a, a bow tie as we'd call it do a figure eight through separating these it's just a single length of uh, wool just white wool make sure you tidy the front up once you've done it two or three times and then we can what finish Trim away your thread. Okay, I'm going to finish this line. Normally, what I would do is just put some varnish on there, uh, allow it to dry, and then I'll trim the breathers. But I can't do that. I've got to show you it finished. So basically, I'll show you how to trim them. Now I can still varnish the the head of the fly once once I'm finished. But obviously, I'm going to show you the fly finished at this point and how to trim the breathers. Take both ends forward of the eye and use the eye, the hook, the very end of the eye, just to lay the scissors on them. A nice straight cut. You can see that. So it's nice and straight. So they're even. And then, what you do is then you just puff these back with your fingers. Just puff them out. And then, what I'll basically, I would, as I say, normally I'd have had this varnish, the head varnished, and then do that. But obviously you've not seen it finished. But what I can do is just later on I can just pull the back, put a wee bit of varnish in there and allow them to dry. But anyway, there's the fly and there's the midge pupa. So basically what you're looking for. Don't worry about the odd strand, let it come and back, you want that. If you don't you can trim them away and that's it. That's just a sunburst and brown uh, midge pupa that works really well. Uh, works here in Scotland but it works really well in Ireland. And, uh, it's certainly worth dyeing, um, and it's a good colour combination. There's other colours. There's here's another good one here. This is one with the red, just red flexi floss, black pheasant tail, a bit of UV at the top. Everything else is much the same. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you enjoy the videos, please subscribe. And thank you for watching.